Then you have non-profit uh, 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 service or public service questions. So um, in the think that. tanks, you know, they work as a research yeah. assistant, yeah. assistant yeah. in public yeah. policy. Yeah. So tell students think widely, but but what advice would you have? Should they well, well, from our didn't look opposite. It's the right next to Yeah. No, it's wrong to the campus. exciting conversation this afternoon that's showcased by some of our finest students. Uh, my name is Brian Smith, and on behalf of the Center for Politics and the People and my colleague and co-director of the Center, Professor Henrik Schatzinger, I'd like to welcome you to this panel discussion by five of our fine Ripon students, all of who engaged in very interesting internships this past summer in the area of politics or law. They took the initiative to search and find these internships in these areas. But since the internships all were unpaid, they submitted applications for financial assistance from the Center for Politics and the People to help them defray their travel and living expenses. Fortunately, over the last several months, the Center has received some generous donations uh, from friends of the Center, specifically to support student internships, so that the students at the college will benefit from the assistance to pursue internships in areas that might open up for them new contacts for the future or give them some experience in the area of public service. So we're happy, we were very happy to, to uh, accept the applications from these five students. They all were excellent. They explained what they wanted to do, where they wanted to be, and what they hoped to gain from the experience. And the only thing we asked of them is that when they finished the internship, would they share some of the wealth of this experience with other people so that others might be able to profit from their experience and maybe do something likewise in the future. So, they will direct their remarks to five questions. We'll begin with two questions, and then when we finish those, we'll go to the third. The first one is, how did they go about finding the internships? They all showed great imagination and initiative. So how did they do it? Secondly, what were the most important learning experiences for them personally? What did they do in the internships? And how did that benefit them personally? So after we finish the conversation on those questions, we'll go to the last one. What advice do they have for their fellow Ripley students uh, for seeking internships in some area of politics, public policy in the future, particularly next summer, because deadlines are beginning to come up fast. So the five students, uh, uh, second from the, uh, the uh, from the right, uh, no, Hannah, you are on the, yes, yeah, second from the right. <laughs> Hannah worked in Minneapolis this summer for the Democratic Farm Labor Party. Uh, Ethan, in the middle, Ethan Fryermuth, worked in the U.S. Embassy in Belgrade in Serbia. Nate Young, who is on your far left, but not necessarily politically, uh, worked in the re-election campaign with Brad Schimmel, who was the Wisconsin Attorney General. On, the, uh, on your far right, who is not far right politically, Abby Kaur worked in the re-election campaign of Tammy Baldwin, U.S. Senator from Wisconsin. And second, from the, um, uh, your uh, left, looking at the panel, is Hannah Krieger, who worked in the office of Eric Toney, District Attorney of Fond du Lac County. And both Hannah and Abby are continuing their internships into the fall. So let's begin with the conversation. I'm going to ask each of them to introduce themselves and tell you a little more about who they are, where they're from, what their major or minor is, and what they see their future career in the area of public service. Then when they finish those introductions, they'll begin a conversation uh, with each other and with us. What, how did they go about uh, finding the internships? And what were their most important learning experiences? And as they go along, they perhaps will even react to each other and maybe build on what each other said or draw each other out more. 
And then when that conversation is finished, uh, we'll ask them to give us some advice for the future. What, what specific things were most helpful to you in finding the internship? Did you have people that advised you? How did you have to go about finding these internships? Um, if you had to do it over again, would you do certain things differently in finding these internships so that you could pass this information on to other fellow students? So this will be a very practical conversation for the benefit not only of those of you here, but this is being videographed on YouTube. So other students and the community and friends at the center will be able, as of this evening, when uh, our student intern uh, Ellen Hughes finishes the editing of the videograph, when it's up on the website. And then it will be available for everyone at the college and anyone anywhere to gain uh, from your experiences. So let's begin with introductions. Introduce yourselves. Tell, tell us something about yourself. All right, my name is Nate Young. For you, those of you that don't know, I'm a junior here at Griffin College. I'm from Kewaskum, Wisconsin. Um, I'm a politics and government major, economics major, and a national security minor. And I did an uh, internship for the Attorney General of Wisconsin, Brad Trimmel, in his re-election campaign, and uh, in his general offices this summer. And your future career goals, and, and my future career goals, um, I know I'm a junior right now, but I'm planning on going to Marquette Law School, hopefully uh, pursuing law and also pursuing um, a international relations uh, graduate degree there. So. Hi, I'm Hannah Krieger. I am currently a sophomore here at Ripon. Uh, I have two majors, one in politics and government and the other in history, and I have two minors, one in Spanish and one in national security studies. Uh, this past summer and all the way up through this December, I've had the pleasure of working at the Fond du Lac County District Attorney's Office under Eric Tony, who's the district attorney, as well as the office managers there. Uh, and in my future, I would also like to go to law school and pursue a law degree as well as a master's and then become a district attorney someday. Ethan? You went the farthest in your future. I should go the furthest. This is a bit of a ways away. My name is Ethan Fryman. I uh, am a senior year at Ripon College. I have majors in economics, politics and government, German, and a minor in national security. Um, and I spent this summer in Belgrade, Serbia, at the U.S. Embassy there. And I plan on um, continuing my education and going for a master's degree uh, in a field related to national security. And Hannah Boyle, you ventured beyond Wisconsin, but yeah. you go as far as Belgrade. I, I, went, I went super far, Twin Cities, which yeah. is pretty cool. Um, so I interned at, oh, well, well, I'm Hannah, you don't know me. Um, and I'm a junior here, and I'm a politics and government and anthropology double major. Um, so I interned at the DFL, which is the Democratic Farmer Labor Party, which is basically the Democratic Party of Minnesota. It has a little bit different of a name. Um, and yeah, I used to say I wanted to be a campaign manager, but I think this summer changed that because it was scary. Yeah. Abby. My name is Abby Korb. I am a junior from Burlington, Wisconsin. I have double majors in psychology and politics and government. And after Ripon, I hope to get a master's degree in political psychology and then work um, doing research on analyzing voter behavior. Now, tell us all of the, the hard work each of you went about in, found, in finding these internships. How long did it take? Uh, where did you find these? Did you do it online? Did you contact people? What's the nuts and bolts of, of getting an internship, um, whether it's paid or unpaid? Do all of you had unpaid internships? So my finding my internship, it probably isn't going to be as hard as these four down here. Um, so, we, the Republican group on campus at Ripon here, we went to a Lincoln Day luncheon, which is, it's kind of a, um, we have dinner, we have lunch uh, with the Green Lake Republican Party, and there's a whole bunch of speakers, uh, Governor Walker was there, the Lieutenant Governor, Governor Glenn Grove was there, and it just so happens that Brad Chimel, the Attorney General of Wisconsin, happened to be there. Before he started speaking, he actually walked up to uh, our table of like 10 or so Republicans that went to the event. And he was talking to us in general and you know, just talking about college and Wisconsin politics. 
And then he started to bring up the election, and he said, hey, you know, I'm actually looking for interns this summer, if any of you are interested, you know. And he gave us his business card, and he told us to contact this person if we were interested. Um, his name was Matthew. I ended up emailing him, saying I was interested. And then what I did, which a lot of people hopefully would do as well, is adjust my resume specifically for that position. I know a lot of people, all they do is make a resume and they think it's good for whatever position they're going to be filling. They believe it's good enough. Um, I adjusted mine based on the idea of working for a political campaign and working for the Attorney General. Um, and I think that definitely, the things I put on my resume jumped off the page to them a little bit. I've worked on political campaigns before, so I think he, uh, Matthew Dobler, his campaign manager, he very much appreciated that experience. Um, we did a few phone interviews, probably like two or three, just to get an outlook on what I was doing for the future, what I wanted to do, um, and just kind of testing my knowledge on some things like Wisconsin law, Wisconsin politics. Um, and like the Republican Party in general in Wisconsin. Um, and then next thing you know, I was, I was put on position for the job and I worked, oh boy, I think five or six months from all the way spring to late summer now and I continue to work now for, until November, until the election. So <coughs> it definitely wasn't as hard probably as some of these other individuals, but it was definitely like, it was a long process. It took a while before I actually knew that I was gonna have the position. Because apparently there was many other applicants that applied, so I was lucky enough to be selected for the position. All right, so my internship was also very easy to find. Uh, actually, if you pay attention to your emails now and then that Ribbon College sends you, uh, you will find that the Career and Profession uh, Professional Development Center sends out an email saying that Fond du Lac District Attorney is looking for interns. And so I got in contact with Sarah Hathaway right away, probably in September of my freshman year. And she was working with me uh, in contacting my office manager now, Julie, and we decided it was a little too soon for me to start in the winter just because I was getting used to college, things like that. So I was actually scheduled for, uh, well, first of all, I had to send in my resume to Julie. And that's one of the amazing things that uh, Ripon College will do for you, this Career and Professional Development Center. You can go down there. They'll find contacts for you. They'll help you. They'll review your resume, things like that. So I sent in my resume. Uh, Julie and Eric looked over my resume, found that they were interested in, uh, not, well, hiring me, I guess. And then later in the spring, I had an interview with them in the office, uh, just going over what I thought about law, some questions about things going on currently, uh, my background, as well as some things I really wanted to see at the district attorney's office. And I got asked a couple trick questions, which I wasn't quite ready for, so look up some. <laughs> uh, just things about, you know, if one train leaves from here and another one leaves from there, which one arrives at New York first, and just try to be on your toes sometimes. <laughs> but so I was lucky enough to get the internship. And then I started working June 13th after I got back from Italy with college. And I've been working there since June, and I'll continue through December. They are also interested in keeping me on afterwards if I'm interested in any cases, things like that. Uh, so I could possibly pursue a secretary job there, I guess. Um, it, it's been really amazing. My advice would be to, uh, like Nate had said, walk into your interview or your resume, know what's going on in the field that you're applying for. And from there on out, I was basically doing anything they needed. They were short two secretaries, so I was filling the positions of some of their secretaries as well as the internship position. 
Uh, I was supposed to work eight to 10 hours a week. I ended up working about 35. Uh, so that was, that was really fun though, because I got to go to court. I got to go on police interviews, uh, some of which were difficult to watch. I got to sit in with clients on pretrial conferences. I also got to send out information to attorneys. So I really got to see everything that goes on in the office. And I'm still learning more every single day. So We've really gotten into question two, but that's mm -hmm. fine. Uh, Nate, do you want to just add a little more what you did? And then as we go down the line, each person can handle both questions at once. Sure, yeah. Sorry for trying to take you on that question too already. So um, <clears throat> I, I did a lot of... Uh, I, I didn't go and get coffee, okay? That's one thing I think a lot of interns fear is that when they start for an internship, they're gonna be running errands like getting coffee or getting their suit from the cleaners or something like that. I think those days are gone, hopefully. Um, but what I did a lot, if any of you have received like a letter from a uh, politician saying we want money or we, we invite you to this dinner or uh, answering general questions that people have emailed or wrote, in, like written in. Um, I did a lot of those. So, if any of you wrote to Brad Schimmel this summer for some reason, my response might have been the one that got back <laughs> to you. Um, one of the biggest things I did was the Fourth of July parades. Um, I essentially helped pick and organize which parades Brad Schimmel was going to go to. Um, and that might sound not like a lot, but it's kind of hard when uh, the campaign manager tells you, all right, we're trying to get as many people, for him to see as many people in a two-day span as <coughs> possible. Um, we ended up doing four parades, one on July 3rd and three of them on July 4th. And I think at least over, oh, I think we calculated the numbers and they would be like about 75,000 people so I in the next big span, which might not sound like a lot, but it was a ton of work. Um, and I don't know if any of you remember July 4th was super hot, so that was a pain to walk in. Three parades, it had to be like 10 miles in one day and we were rushing to get to all of them, but that was probably my favorite thing to do was organize the parade, which ones we were going to go to, do all the research on how many people visited each one, and, and then to somehow do all four in the two-day period was amazing in my mind. Well, Ethan, how did you go about it? <laughs> so, uh, I came in contact with this internship as a result of a diplomat in residence coming down from the uh, University of Minnesota Superior. He came and there was a, a luncheon with professors and students that were interested in possibly going into a career field with any of the federal agencies in general. And so from him I learned about this internship. Um, and any of you guys could also learn about this internship. You don't actually have to meet someone who has been in the field uh, just by going on any of the uh, federal agency websites. The process is basically the same for all of them as far as applying for it. They're going to ask you to go on the USA Jobs website, which you'll also use later if you plan on actually applying to these agencies. Um, you're going to create a resume, you'll create a statement of interest, and then there'll be a whole series and field of questions that have to do with um, the specific um, job that you're, or specific job in the specific agency that you're looking at going into. Uh, so once I had done that and selected two possible locations where I would want to go. I chose um, Belgrade, Serbia, and Bucharest, Romania. Um, Belgrade could get back to me first, and they were the one I wanted the most, so I said yes uh, immediately. Every uh, agency has a slightly different policy, but after that, I had to go through a, um, a pretty extensive um, security clearance process, which took about, took a lot of information that I had to put in about three, four months, which is an expedited process. Most security clearances last a year or so. So it was really exceptional when I got to me that quickly. So if you are interested in interning with any of the federal agencies, I highly recommend going on their websites. They're gonna have a page for internships because they really want people who are qualified to intern with them so that they can work for them. Um, and just see what they have to offer. Again, process the same, probably go through USA 
jobs. Um, as far as at the internship itself, so I flew over to um, Serbia, and I'm very grateful for the CPP grant because it covered a lot of those travel costs. Um, and the job of a foreign service officer is very similar to that of a, of a reporter in many senses, because they're going to go out, they're going to meet with various uh, nonprofit groups, NGOs in the community, they'll meet with government officials, they'll meet with um, other members of the international community, so other embassies, um, other foreign service officers, and they'll meet all these various people, they'll ask them questions about whatever specific topic they're dealing with. So while I was there, I focused a lot on human rights issues, um, um, uh, LGBT rights, on uh, human trafficking, on media rights, and uh, you go and you find all these people, you ask them questions, and you collect it all into a report called a case, which you would then end up sending to DC once it's cleared through a variety of different people. Um, so it was a really interesting process. I got to meet a whole bunch of people. I, um, oh dear, yeah, so I got to meet representatives from, most of our allies in Europe, I think, which was exceptional. Um, one of my favorite members is also from 4th of July because we had a big 4th of July event where the goal was to basically gather all of your contacts in one place and, you know, have something fun to do so that maybe get some goodwill regarding America. I don't think it's an unreasonable proposition. <laughs> it works pretty well. Um, so it's a huge event and the ambassador actually personally taught a group of volunteers that was about 20 of us to do a, a line dance for the Serbians and to lead them in a line dance um, at this big 4th of July event at the ambassador's residence. And so I really wish I had a video, but I think the only people filming were Serbians. Um, but you do a whole bunch of different things. And the, the work of a foreign service officer is very much dependent on what the goals are of the specific mission. And a lot of it's just creating goodwill um, and reporting on the issues. So that was an excellent experience. Um, so if you're like me and don't check your email and don't go to luncheons with people, you go on Google and you just Google. I knew where I wanted to be. I wanted to be in the Twin Cities area, so I it was just like political internships in Twin Cities. And uh, there's a bunch of them because St. Paul's the capital of Minnesota. Um, so I probably applied to, ooh, 50 internships um, in the span of uh, probably beginning last summer to probably almost up to spring break. And I got probably around 10 interviews and then ended up getting offered three um, different internships that I could have taken and I chose the DFL. Um, so I know like this panel is called like dream internships, but uh, don't, don't be hurt if you don't get your dream internship. Uh, you do, uh, politics sometimes kind of sucks, so in fact, you kind of got to take what you get um, just to kind of get your foot in the door. Um, so yeah, I interviewed with the DFL over the phone because I'm obviously like five hours away from them, um, and I got hired. And so I was a communication and research um, intern, so basically what I did is I worked right under the communication um, director of the DFL. Uh, and so working for a party is very different, especially during a campaign season, because you're not a campaign, um, but you work a lot with the campaigns, uh, and you do a lot of background research that the campaigns don't want to do. Um, so, for example, I would go and help track candidates. I would write research books on um, the different Republican candidates. Uh, get all the dirt, go look at their Twitter from like 2012. Um, it, was, it was a good time. And, and I'm allowed to say that now because it's over. Um, yeah, so you kind of also have to like keep a kind of low profile. Um, yeah, so I would write op-ed pieces and send them into the Star Tribune, New York Times, try to kind of get um, more people interested in the Minnesota election because it is actually a very big election this year for them. They're one of kind of the interest states, per se. Um, and yeah, um, one of the coolest things is, so President Trump actually came to Minnesota this summer and he went up to Duluth and I got to track the event. Um, that was fun. I didn't really get any cool photos, so I basically just stood in the crowd and wore a mega hat. Yeah, it was fun. <laughs> uh, so I also applied for lots and lots of 
and internships and uh, interviewed for a few of them. Um, but I actually got mine more through networking more than anything. I think I had made a post on Facebook about how I had just sent in another like batch of uh, resumes and whatnot. And someone was like, hey, you should contact um, the Baldwin campaign. I think they're looking for interns. And it happened that they were looking for someone in their Milwaukee office, which is like 45 minutes from even home. So it was super doable. Um, and I contacted the manager and asked her, you know, if this was a possibility and what she needed. And I sent in a resume. Um, and then after a while, I kind of I sat on it for a while and was just looking around for other things. You know, I wanted to, to apply for a lot. And I want to say about February, um, we kind of agreed that it would be a good fit. And then I went to the office, I would want to say around March, and had a more formal interview. Um, got to meet some of the people in the office, and I met the current, or the intern who was current at the time, and we just talked through things and got um, a vetting process going so I would have access to things from the campaign. And I pretty much accepted it that day. Um, so. Yes, you can like Google things and go on websites, but also, like they said, like definitely use your networking because it might not come from an email from the school or a luncheon. It might come from someone you know or someone who you've met that works in the field. Um, because now, because of that internship, I have so many more connections and networking connections that I can continue to use in the future. Um, since you also talked the 4th of July, I guess it wasn't my favorite moment, um, but we did do a parade and it was really, really, really hot. Um, and uh, Baldwin was supposed to ride. We had two cars for her, and she was supposed to ride. And she's like, no, I'm going to walk. And so it was probably 95 degrees, and she was walking and shaking hands with everyone. Um, so it, definitely not my favorite moment, but it was still really fun. Um, but I also did a lot of, um, we were a coordinated campaign office, so I did a lot with the campaign itself. Um, but I also did a lot with the field organizers. And that's actually how I'm continuing my fe uh, internship fellowship now. I'm doing a fellowship. Democratic Party of Wisconsin. So my technical internship is over, so I can also talk about things. I did a lot, I did a lot with Hannah, did I do, did do some tracking, um, and got to do different events with our other interns. But I did a lot of the field work, so a lot of phone calls, organizing volunteers, um, just you know, really helping people get situated when they wanted to go out and volunteer. And you know, I really did a big, a big mix of everything, but that was really helpful for me because I was able to see all the different facets of a campaign and really see what I wanted to do in the future. Okay. Wonderful. Great stories. Let's take a, a, a change here. Now, the audience has been listening to some very interesting stories and people. Why don't we give you a chance to react or ask questions before we go to practical advice, okay? So what would you like to hear from these candidates? Yes, Mom. So, like, being an international student here and also, like, being your global studies major, so I'm looking forward to like work in the nonprofit sector, and also you just mentioned like the diplomatic. So, so I'm kind of like hanging around. Let me repeat the question for the sake of the microphone. So this is an international student, and is interested in maybe your advice on how someone from another country who's here studying, how could they go about finding an internship, particularly if it had to do with international relations or international work. Uh, well, a lot of these international organizations are really looking for you to have a broad um, spectrum of experiences from which you can relate to other people with. And so being an international ex student will naturally give you more international experience than a lot of other people. And that's important, but it's also important, especially, and for the State Department was uh, especially so, to be able to relate to people in various different ways. So, um, for example, I'm just going to use the State Department because that's what I know the most about. Um, they wanted you, and in fact on the test they'll tell you that you need to know literature, you need to know pop culture, you need to know movies, you need to know um, theater, you need to know music. Uh, and all of these things, because the people that you're going to come in contact with will have a very wide variety of interests, and the more wide your interests are particularly, um, the more likely you are to relate to them on a personal level. And so a lot of internships especially want to see that you have a very wide variety of interests. And so I highly recommend that, especially with an international focus. Um, now, I would like a, a clarification. Were you looking specifically to go more of the NGO? Group? Yeah, NGO, and also like, I can go more like, international. Because I'm also going to be an like, international relations minor, and mm -hmm. also English major. So like double major, double minor, and also minor in Repeat, repeat what he just said. 
uh, what he just said that he would, um, he was looking to go into the NGO sector, possibly international business, and then he's also an international um, business minor as well as. I don't know. I'm like a global studies major, global studies major. English major, and then I took two, two minors, like pre law mm -hmm. and then international relations. English studies major, minor in international law and international relations. No. Pre law. So I'm like double major. Uh, double major, like English and global mm -hmm. studies, and then I'm like double minor, like pre law, mm -hmm. like law and society, and then I'm second minor is international relations. <laughs> Still quite enough. I'm sorry. I'm not going to catch all that. Mr. English Smith. and global studies. English and global studies. Majors. majors pre minors in pre-law and IR. international relations. I am sorry. It is a lot. I can't remember mine sometimes. <laughs> um, but did you come across non-governmental organizations yeah. that are working in international absolutely. work that he might be able to uh, relate to? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And there's a ton of uh, non-governmental organizations. And the, the primary one that I worked with was USAID, which is affiliated with the government, but it's it's a it's a nonprofit. It's an aid organization, and so they're really excellent. They're all about focusing on creating um, development projects within other countries, and they operate in every country in the world. So um, organizations like that are great. The Peace Corps. Also, most of the foreign service officers were in the Peace Corps at one time or another. It's part of this international background that they're really looking to have in the State Department. Um, but generally, I would just recommend finding a topic or field that you're interested in, looking up online, finding what organizations are big in that field, and then looking at their internships. Because these organizations are always looking for qualified individuals will understand these locations, understand what it is to work in an international environment, and they really want to have quality people working for them, so they will internship opportunities. I'd like to add, uh, there is a website for a federation of, of United States NGOs that work in international development. And the federation is called InterAction, I-N-T-E-R-A-C-T-I-O-N. If you Google InterAction, you'll get their website, and you'll get about 50 to 75 large non-governmental organizations that are working in an international work in some way. Economic development, uh, human trafficking, the environment, human rights, and that's a good place, I think, to start. Thanks. Good, thank you. Another question or comment? Yes, Mohammed. I've heard some critics about how American diplomacy has been changing or the role of diplomacy in American relationship with other countries has been diminishing. I was wondering what's your relationship with that topic? What the, do you think? So the question is, has there have been changes uh, in, in U.S. diplomacy or even diminishment of reliance on diplomacy in recent years? And did any of you, and particularly Ethan, did you see that uh, working in the embassy in Belgrade? Uh, so Diplomacy is still a very critical component of U.S. foreign policy, and the State Department isn't going anywhere. It's very important, and the Trump administration still considers it to be critical. It is true that they, some, it sometimes seems like they don't focus on it as much as perhaps some past administrations have, and there have been um, cuts in the amount of people who are in the State Department, and cuts the budget of the State Department, which have now been reversed um, by the new Secretary of State. But it's, it's very important and critical, because in order to um, effectively deal with other countries, both economically and uh, from a military perspective, you have to be able to talk with them and have personal connections with them. So diplomacy is the art of making public policy effective through personal relationships. And that's just never going to change, and that's always been recognized by the U.S. government as important. But I'm sure my fellow interns could say something about their political candidates running across um, those issues. Diplomacy, maybe? No, the Attorney General really did not. Nothing. <laughs> so, that, no, that's no. If you want to talk more about it afterwards, I can talk to you. Yes, Professor Miller. Uh, so, all of your internships are unpaid. Uh, so, first of all, the, the softball question uh, would it have been possible for you to do these internships without the grants? Number one. Uh, number two, I have been concerned about unpla unpaid labor. Um, your labor was unpaid by the various organizations. How do you respond to that? Did it feel like volunteerism? Uh, many of you mentioned that uh, you were doing things you didn't enjoy do uh, doing. 
If this kind of uh, internship that was required to get into politics generally is a kind of institutional hazing, and how should we respond to that? Yeah, good questions. Um, the first one, would you have been able to do your internships if you didn't get financial assistance? Okay? And then secondly, all of these internships are unpaid. So um, how do you feel about that? Is this almost like a hazing that you have to go through uh, with some difficulty, uh, particularly no money at first, in order to get this experience? And do you think, what do you think about it? Is that ethical? I guess I'll start. So the easy question first. Yeah, I could have done the internship uh, without the grant. It would have sucked. Um, I live in Kewaskum, which if anyone knows is by like Cheboygan area. And I had to drive to Madison three times a week. That's like a two hour drive. And with the gas money every day, that's four hours of driving constantly. I think it equated to being like 170 miles there and back. Um, that was a lot of money. And then parking was ridiculous in Madison. I don't know if any of you were parked in Madison, but it seemed like it was like $15 a day. Um, and then, so I could have done it, but it would have sucked. Um, and then the second question, it's easier to answer this with political campaigns. Some people give money to political campaigns, some people volunteer. Um, so I just saw it as I was volunteering for the campaign. For other positions, it's, yeah, I don't know. It's kind of odd to do some positions and not get paid, but it is what it is, I guess, if you're willing to do it. Yeah. Other reactions? Huh? Yeah. Uh, I, like Nate, would have been able to have completed my internship without the grant. However, the grant was wonderful and paying for gas mileage. I did not have as long of a commute as Nate. I actually stayed in Ripon this summer, and I also live in Oshkosh. So driving to Fond du Lac is only about a half hour drive one way. Uh, but it did really help with paying for the gas and compensating me for some time that I had spent, um, specifically since I was going in so frequently. Uh, regarding not being paid, uh, for a while it did seem a little unfair. However, I do have to stress that internships with district attorneys rarely happen for someone in an undergrad position. And so for me to even get that internship at all was truly a blessing. And furthermore, if I go to law school in the future, that opens a paid position for me as their intern. And I will, if they like me, hopefully, <laughs> I will take precedent um, as a paid intern in law school. So after a while, I came to truly realize that um, it was quite a blessing and I didn't really mind not being paid. Uh, and furthermore, what I've learned, I actually started to really enjoy even the office tasks I was doing on top of the fun parts like going to court, uh, following police officers, stuff like that. Uh, so after contemplation, I would say that it would still be worth it without being paid. So I would say I would have been able to do this, the internship without the grant from CPP, but uh, that being said, I don't know if I would have been able to consider graduate school or some, some of these other opportunities that would come later if I hadn't had the grant. Um, because you're not just talking about um, the cost of doing the internship itself, although that can be substantial, it's also the opportunity cost of the money that you could have been making otherwise. Um, so I understand the point that uh, unpaid internships seem very unfair in the sense that it's often not an opportunity open to people from lower income brackets, um, which is very true, and I believe that's a very real concern. Um, with the U.S. government specifically, I know all of these, all of these organizations, they run, they're very conscious of their budgets, and so when they say, oh, we could pay our interns, they say, oh, no, we could have these full-time opportunities um, instead and expand the amount of work that we could do. Um, so, Part of that, to me, seems like they're trying to be really close stewards of the public dollar um, and only get the tax money. Um, but if it is 
important to the citizens that interns to the government are paid. Write your politicians. <laughs> um, if enough of you talk, they'll listen to their constituents. Um, yeah, I'm going to echo what they said. I definitely would have been able to do this internship without the grant. However, it did um, allow me to not have another job. And when you're working uh, in like with campaigns and with a party, there's a lot of last minute things that kind of just pop up that they'll text you at like three in the morning and say, "Hey, do you want to go to Duluth at like six in the morning?" And I'm like, "Sure." Um, so it kind of gave me a lot of flexibility that some of my other um, fellow interns at the DFL weren't able to have because they had to work um, another job. Um, and on like the unpaid labor, I actually had a very interesting experience because one of my fellow interns, he, I don't know if any of you guys are familiar about this, but it kind of was a story that broke over the summer that in Ireland, in Ireland they had a campaign that was like basically abusing their interns and was like giving them really like bad um, like living places and like not paying them and like starving and stuff. And he was actually one of those people um, that helped break that story because he was involved. Um, so I'm not saying it could be worse, but it could be worse. Um, and I think, yeah, it is kind of like an icky situation because if you don't, um, like I think all of us can say that we're very privileged that we could have done this internship and that we had this grant and that um, lower income people might not be able to do that. But like the networking and the opportunities it gives you kind of pays for itself in my thing. Um, I know like I already have like internship opportunities um, for the spring and next summer because of the people I met. So in my eyes, it was definitely worth it not being paid. Abby? So as everyone said, I could have done it. Uh, <laughs> I didn't have as long of a drive as Nate did, but I did drive to, I was in the car for about two hours a day when I did go. Um, and just to kind of help supplement things, I know I really want to start saving for grad school. I did babysit a lot of the summer. I would be up at like five in the morning and drive out, babysit for a few hours, and then book it right to Milwaukee. So I had really long days, um, but it definitely did pay off. I was able to find other ways to kind of supplement that not having like a full-time paying job like I had the summer before. Um, but yeah, I mean, we have so many different experiences. It was hard because I was working in the coordinating office, so there were a lot of like field organizers that were there doing a lot of the same work that I was doing, and I was helping them out a lot, and they were getting paid, and I wasn't. Um, and like, I actually had been encouraged to apply for one of those positions, but that would have resulted in me having to take a semester off. So knowing that I was able and capable and um, I, I could have had a pre position that made things a little difficult, like for me personally. Um, but I do understand that we have to go through these experiences to get those paid positions. So it, it just really depends, I guess, on who you're surrounded by and you know, really the conditions. It sounds like we were all very lucky to have good offices and good people that we were working with. Any other questions or comments for the just a follow up on that yes. one? Did any of you like ask your supervisor for a letter of recommendation on your way out? Or ask someone to be a reference? So the question is, did any of you ask for letters of recommendations at the end of your internship this summer? Or as if you're continuing in your internship, are you asking for letters of recommendation? Yeah, I, I, for political campaigns, it's probably much easier than some of these other ones. But I asked the, uh, the two campaign managers for the Brad Schumel campaign. Um, and yeah, they were, they were happy to. I have not as of yet, but I'm actually planning on asking my office manager tomorrow for an internship that I'm currently applying for for next summer. Uh, so yes. Um, so my superiors made it very clear to me that they wanted me to use them as letters of recommendation. So um, both the deputy political officer and the political officer there at the U.S. at the embassy in Belgrade said that absolutely please do. Yeah, very similar. Um, I think since they do realize that we are unpaid and this is kind of a stepping stone experience, like I had the chairman of the DFL like offered, like, here's my business card, email me if you ever need one, which is very nice because like he's kind of a big weight. So woo -hoo. <laughs> oh, yeah. I didn't ask for one specifically on my way out because I've learned that a lot of times they have to be sort of tailored to that situation. Um, and so with, I was still continuing to work on the fellowship, I still have been in contact with all the people that I worked with over the summer. So as the opportunity arises, I'll ask them for either one that's more generic that touches on what um, all internships are looking for, or ask them for specific ones. 
One more question before we ask them their advice for us. Anyone else in the comment? Well, two, okay. So, okay. Why don't you go first and then? So this is more towards Nader Hanna because you mentioned this uh, during your panel. But what would be your advice for someone that wants to pursue one of these great opportunities but maybe doesn't already have like the background or the experience um, either on their resume or just that they've had in their past um, that could help them get into one of these positions? So the question is what if you don't have something on the resume that's going to be appealing to the people who are deciding on the internship? What can you do? Mm. Do you have any advice? You can't lie. <laughs> Just still do it. I mean, sometimes you just gotta not get the internship to make the next one feel even better. I don't know, I guess, yeah, still do it. It'll still try, it'd be stupid not to. I mean, you know, yeah. just imagine if like none of us tried to get our internships because we just thought like, oh, you know, they don't want to have someone that doesn't have the experience necessarily, but like, usually they, give you a shot, most of the time, I would think, but yeah, just try, I would think. And this internship that I'm currently in is my first internship for anything in a law field, and I want to pursue a career in law, so you have to realize you have to start somewhere and take that leap. I, contrary to what Nate does, I include pretty much everything on my resume, just because you never know what connections you might make with someone. For example, I had an award I earned in 4-H on my resume. And my office manager was like, you're in 4-H, really? And then you can make that bond um, because they have a similar experience. So even awards, honors, experiences you have in other fields that you might not think pertain to what you're applying for, include those. You never know what, you know, what that might show someone, your dedication, just because you don't have experience in a particular field yet does not mean that your accomplishments and your hard work in another field are not outstanding. So feel free to show off what you can do in different areas. Absolutely. And if I could add to that, um, just remember these are internships. So they don't expect you to have past experience. They expect this to be really your first foray. So don't be shy. I don't know. Have any anything to add to that? Yeah, I didn't have any experience really uh, in the world of politics before this either, other than being a POCO major. But I mean, I think the things that they're looking for are more of like leadership and organizational skills, which you can get from like clubs on campus or just like like high school jobs or like even like day to day jobs that you have here. And that's more what they're looking for there. Like, because basically what they would always tell me is like, they can teach you how to use van, they can teach you how to like talk, not like talk. But like how to like how to write like an op-ed and like things like that. But the skill like leadership and like organization and like basic writing skills are the things they can't teach you that you want. They want you to come in with. So I actually started college as pre-med. Um, so a lot of my experiences like up until the end of my freshman year were geared towards that. Um, so I really had a lot a wide variety of things on my resume. Um, but I think it's really important, like Hannah said, to put everything on there because it shows that you're versatile, it shows that you have a wide variety of things that you can do and that you're interested in. And a lot of times they're like, oh, that's a really important skill in that one job that we could really use here that we don't have. So it's just put everything on there because it shows that you're well-rounded. And one thing you can do, it was mentioned before, our Career and Professional Development Center here that uh, Lindsay Bloomer and Sarah Hathaway uh, run. They are a tremendous resource. They, they help these students. But you could go in and talk to them and just say, do you know of any internships? And they have a whole variety of internships, including in business. And then sit down and talk with them, and they'll ask you questions about maybe things you've forgotten about and help you create your resume. So we do have assistance on campus to get started. Okay. Ellen, you had to get the last question. Okay, so Hannah Boyum kind of talked about this a little bit, saying that she thought she wanted to be a campaign manager and got into the internship and realized that's not what she wanted to do. Did any of the rest of you experience any moments where you were like, yes, this is what I want to do, or you realized, no, this isn't what I want to do, and if you could talk <laughs> about that? Uh, so I had a moment like that. I actually talked with my mom about it. Um, I'm primarily working as a legal assistant, so I'm not really working as a district attorney because I can't. 
argue in court for someone, uh, or against someone, more like. Uh, but I actually, while on some forensic interviews, uh, watching people give accounts of what happened to them, there were points where I thought, wow, I don't think I can do this. This isn't for me. Uh, things like that. And then I maybe thought, well, maybe I want to be a detective so I can be closer to helping these people. But I ultimately came back around to saying, a district attorney is what I want to be because I know, even though it might be tough for me to watch these things, I, I know I have the dedication, I have, um, you know, I have all these qualities I've learned from this internship. And it really helped me to realize that even though some things are tough to watch, it makes me want to do it all the more. And, and there was that shocked moment, like, I don't know if I can do this, but then it turned into, this is why I want to do this. So, I did have that moment, though, of, uh oh <laughs> uh, I also had a bit of that one. I'd say one of the most important things that I learned during my internship was just what it meant to be a foreign service officer outside of the workplace. Um, you're living in a foreign country, it's a very different environment, and you have to move around a whole lot. And so, while the job itself was something that I definitely wanted to do, the lifestyle that had to go with it um, probably isn't, and that was a really important thing for me to learn. Yeah, so, um, before, <laughs> before I worked for the campaign, you know, I thought, yeah, maybe, maybe later in my life I could work for a political campaign or something. Well, no, I don't want to do that ever again. Um, it might seem glorious, it might seem great. There was a lot of parts that were very fun, like doing the 4th of July and all that stuff. There's a lot of behind the scenes stuff that no one really sees that absolutely sucks. I had to call hundreds if not thousands of people asking them to help, and they would just say no. I had, I remember one day doing nomination papers, I did like 200 doors, knocked on doors of random people, and at the end of the day I looked at my nomination sheet and I filled like one sheet up, which is 10 signatures, because not many people know the Attorney General. Maybe if it was different if it was Tim Baldwin or Scott Walker or something like that, but when you have to explain to someone what they do when you're standing there for five minutes or eight, and they're like at the end, no, I, you know, I really don't want to. It sucks. Um, now I'm not like saying that to dissuade you from working for a political campaign. There's a lot of learning experiences throughout the way, a lot of great opportunities, a lot of connections you can make. I mean, I've met people now that I can just text on the phone where before I'd never be able to, very important people in Wisconsin. <clears throat> so, as much as I liked a lot of stuff, there was a lot of stuff that I was thinking, oh my god, like, I just want someone else to do. But it, it's a, it was a great experience overall, like, not taken away from it at all. Um, so I still somewhat want to work on campaigns, but not in the field capacity like I, I did a lot of. Um, like I said, I want to do like research, and I used to hate research, like with a burning passion. Um, but just being able to do some of that at school and talking to other people about it, it's kind of like opened my eyes to like the whole other side of politics that's out there. Um, and we actually had a rally over the summer for Baldwin, and we had Senator Kamala Harris from California. And I talked to her, and she's like, you should like really learn how to do coding if you want to do research. And I was like, mm, no, not for me. And she's like, no, you really need to do it. And so I've been trying to somewhat teach myself that through <laughs> online, and it's awful. Um, but I know that like that, I realized that that's what I wanted to do was research. And because of the connections I had, I was able to kind of make that one step closer to being able to do that. Um, but I also eventually, like way far down the road, want to run for office. Um, and so just kind of seeing like the compassion that all the candidates that I interacted with this summer had for their constituents on both sides. Um, they all really care about what their constituents have to say, and just being able to have that personal interaction with the people that I, you know, that they get to govern, that's super important to me, so I, that was kind of an eye-opening moment for me as well. Honey, you don't want to be a campaign. <laughs> um, yeah. That's, I, I don't know if I ever actually really want to be a campaign manager, but you know how you get that one job or like when everyone asks you which one you're like, yeah, 
that my campaign manager was mine. And I worked really closely with a lot of campaign managers. Um, and they are just constant balls of stress who are trying to <laughs> wrangle uh, crazy people. Um, so I decided that's not really what, it, what I want to do. However, I did um, really like the research and not tracking, but like doing like the uh, research books part of it. Um, so that's something I can look into. Um, I'm really thankful that I had the experience to be like, ooh, this isn't what I want to do. Um, that is the nice thing about internships. It's like, it's not forever, it's for three months. And you can do anything for three months, I promise. <laughs> Now, for the last five minutes, do you have any practical advice that you haven't already brought up for other students that uh, you think would be good for students here or who will be watching this tape later get profit by? Um, I feel like if, if you see an internship and you think, oh, maybe that'd be a cool experience to do, definitely apply for it because I think there's a lot of jobs in the world that we think, oh, that'd be fun to do, I think I'd be good for that. You probably are good for that, or maybe if you're not good for it, then you know, hey, like, I don't want to do this in the future. And I think that's what some of us kind of, like, got out of this internship. Um, as much fun and connections we got out of it, it definitely, like, strengthens our future career path on what we know what we want to do. Um, like I said, I met tons of great people. I, I mean, I got to see firsthand stuff that before anyone else saw it, I got to see it and, uh, you know, touch the modify with my own hands and stuff like that. Um, you know, just apply for them. It's a great opportunity if you don't. And if you don't know if you can do it, you can always just try it. And usually they don't mind if you, because even the Fred Channel's campaign manager told me, you know, if you, if you don't like this experience, like, it's no big deal. You can, you know, come and go, do as much as you wish, you know. But, yeah, that's what I would say, just apply. And would you all say that it's very valuable to have an internship on your resume? Yes, because exactly. <laughs> yeah. Whatever you're going to do later in life, if that's kind of a notch on your barrel, as yes. it were, yeah. People are going to take notice and say, this is an interesting go-getting person, and we're in. So would you say that's a very valuable thing? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. think about not just your current resume, but building your future resume, that internships can really help. I think the biggest piece of advice I have is to stay in contact and, and communicate with those who are above you. Uh, for example, there's, I have two examples, a good one and a bad one. Uh, if you're interested in something that your internship is dealing with, don't be scared to ask like your office manager, your superior, like, hey, can I go do that? Can I see what that's about? Um, because chances are they want you to get as much out of this experience as possible as well. Uh, so like I was asking, can I go on this forensic interview? Can I sit in on this? And that was really a great way to learn more about even related careers. Um, and another thing is when you make mistakes in your internship, like sending out subpoenas for the wrong day, <laughs> you need to be able to go to your superior and say, hey, how do I fix this? Uh, things like that, or shoot, I filed this wrong, something like that, because when you, when you get into these internships, you're, you're working on something that doesn't just affect you. And so you have to have the initiative to admit when you screw up. And you also have to be willing to ask for help because honestly, they were like, oh, I've done that a thousand times. It's really easy to fix. But here I was thinking, oh no, I just ruined the court system. <laughs> so, yeah. so you just have to take the initiative and just be willing to talk to your superiors and learn as much as you can from them and just build those firm relationships and be willing to admit mistakes. I would say have diverse interests and do a variety of very different things. It makes you a more interesting person, a better person, someone people want to employ. Um, and you never know what will make a connection. Um, my advice it kind of goes off of what I said earlier is like even if it's not your dream internship and like you are like oh I don't know if I'm gonna like this just do it because it's like like I said this wasn't my dream internship it realized that like it made me realize a lot of stuff about my life but I learned so much like 
so many things that like I can't even like comprehend like like no no shade to college but like I literally like those three months I learned so many like practical skills that like I just can't learn when I'm here where like here I learned very like philosophical and like kind of things but then I kind of learned how to apply it which is something that you need to know for a real job experience. I would definitely say just apply. Um, I applied for a lot last year but I really kind of kept it within the Wisconsin and Chicago area because I was like, I don't know if I can go away from home and know if that was something I was interested in doing. Um, but now this year, I've already applied for something on the East Coast, something on the West Coast, um, and I was really iffy about it, and I actually texted my mom one day, and I was like, there's a super awesome internship at the ACLU, but I don't think I want to go uh, to New York for a summer. She's like, no, apply. So, you know, even if you're scared, even if you don't think you'll get it, just apply for it because you never know and you might be surprised and it might be the best experience ever and just completely open up your future career path. One more comment? Well, I have one thing. Internships for next summer, the applications should be now or like by the end of October. You need to get a head start on that really quickly if you want to have one this summer. So I recommend that. That's why we did the panel now rather than next spring because deadlines are coming. And again, the Career and Professional Development Office can help you know when some deadlines are coming. Yep. And if you're looking for something like legislative and their seats up this year, look on like November 7th, the day after the election, <laughs> um, because a lot of the, the current legislators that are up, seats are up haven't opened up applications. So like literally look like the day after the election if that's something you're interested in too. And talking about applications, there are applications that you can fill out for a fellowship from the Center for Politics and the People. Thanks to our generous donors who are now giving money for internships, we're going to be able to offer, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, my co-director, but I think we can offer five a year for the next several years, and that's the hope. And they each can be $2,000. Um, so you have to fill out an application, it will, it's on the website, or will be soon, of the Center for Politics and the People, and um, that hopefully will continue the great experiences that you've had. And uh, any of you who are watching YouTube or, or here, if you want to ask more questions of these fine young men and women, please do so. They're very happy to share their information. So we want to thank you very much for a very interesting conversation. That the next event for the sponsored by the Center of Politics and People will be in later October. We're in the process of conversations with Representative Glenn Grothman, who is our congressman, and his Democratic opponent, Dan Cole. And we're hoping to find a mutually convenient date when both of them can be here to debate, as we had a debate here two weeks ago with um, Joan Baldwin and Frank Perez. So we will keep you informed and we'll keep you up to date on candidates as they come in. Thank you so much for coming.